Love it. Hey, everyone. Hello, hello. Oh my goodness, we are live. That's exciting. So uh, as you can tell, uh, we're here, Stubb and I and Chef Maria, who is our special guest today. Hi. The warm up. This is where we get you guys on Periscope, you guys out on Facebook Live, ready to uh, come in and deal with the antics that are going to happen. <laughs> um, I've just briefly, uh, virtually met uh, Chef Maria, and um, she has lived up to every expectation Stub has presented for me. I set a low bar, though. That, yeah. That, that, well, basically, because I'm not that tall, so I can just walk right under it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so thank you again for everybody who has liked and um, uh, supported us in Beyond the Bottle. Um, if there's anybody on Facebook or on Periscope, would you please take a moment to share this out and uh, get this festivity going? Uh, I think it's time. I think we're warmed up. I think we're ready to actually get the show going. All right, so hello again. Let's do this formal introduction now. Um, I'm Jen from Wine Antics, if you didn't know already. I'm an advanced uh, and certified, not crazy, but certified wine taster. Um, today we have a very special show. It's called Beyond the Bottle, and this is the, uh, this is the time where we show you what happens beyond the people, the places, the events, all the fun things that happen in the wine, beer, and spirits industry. Today, we're focusing on holiday party pairings with food and wine. Our special uh, guest today is Chef Maria. So I would love it if you take a minute and, and give yourself a proper introduction, Chef Maria. Well, uh, my name is Maria Gonzalez, and uh, I've been cooking for years and years and years, and I'm very experienced at throwing parties because I do them all the time. It is so much fun. It really is. And if when done correctly, you as a host can have fun as well as the guests. Absolutely. And in the kitchen with, uh, with Chef Maria today is Stubb from Cork Envy. I know I'm throwing the introductions out a little bit. Uh, I use... <laughs> Just completely missed the order, but it's live. That's what happened. So let me introduce my gracious, regionally famous co-host, Stubb from CorkMV.com. Yeah. Hi. No, I'm glad to be here. And I'm really glad to have Maria in the kitchen with me today. Uh, Maria and I have known each other for a couple years, and um, I'm really honored that she's here in my kitchen. Uh, we would have shot this in her kitchen, but she pulls knives out when you enter her kitchen. Okay, no, no, so. No, but very honored to have her here today. She has some great dishes up prepared for us that we're going to make some, uh, share some great drinks with, I think. I believe so. I, be I, be I totally believe so. Um, so let me start this off. And, and this is going to be the first question to Maria. In preparing, let's think about getting in the right mindset of having a party. Um, what are a, a, a couple top tips when choosing a menu for a holiday party? Well, first of all, you have to really understand Think about what kind of party you want to have. Do you want to have a huge open house with lots of people? Do you want to have more intimate cocktail party? One of the things that I like to do is I keep things semi-homemade. There are a lot of things that I do my, myself. And there's some things, there's no harm in store-bought, uh, you know, getting store-bought uh, items out of Costco or BJ's. Um, so you have to know the taste and how formal you want it to be. I like to do a lot of action stations. And by that, like for example, yesterday, uh, my holiday party, I had a set of three crock pots and it was a slider bar. One was sloppy joes, one was barbecue chicken, and the other one was a, a Cuban a lechon dish. And you could just make your own slider rolls and put it, put it out there. I also had a macaroni and cheese bar. Big Ooh. macaroni and cheese, any, any chafing dish, and have different toppings, jalapenos, bacon bits, taco meat, hot sauce. And people can mix and match what they want. And that way you're not slaving all day long. Wow, that's some some great advice. I, I like the idea of actually having a party and not slaving over the food and trying to be that gracious host that I think everybody wants to be 
when they're doing a party. Stub, uh, let's let's talk about the other side of this. She, uh, Chef Maria mentioned some great food options and some great menu development. Why don't why don't you share some tips? Well, uh, so that you so that we can uh, figure out what beverages to choose with that. So, you know, I do prepare menus when I have parties, uh, not as much, but, you know, being the wine guy most of the time, uh, people expect a certain level of uh, beverages available uh, when I throw a party. Uh, I like to personally have, if, if I'm having a, you know, medium to larger gathering, I'd like to personally have two reds and two whites minimum available for guests, uh, all of the same thing. You know, a lot of people just open what they have in some order, but I like to have some reason that I've chosen these drinks. Uh, so two whites, two reds, and you can pick, you know, some more fruit forward or more, you know, kind of wines that the wine geeks would like. Um, so, you know, it gives something for everyone at the party. And then, of course, always cocktails, uh, a few specialty cocktails that you have in mind and all of the ingredients to make is all always a great idea. And, of course, a variety of, uh, of beers as well. Um, but just think about, as Maria said, with the food, you think about who's coming and what type of party you're having and uh, go with that. But I think we both kind of said variety is is really the uh, the essence of it. Yeah. It is said to be the spice of life. <laughs> so let's uh, take a moment and get right into where we start in the party. And I feel like cheese is always the great starter or a great appetizer for any anybody. Maria, what advice would you give uh, for creating the perfect holiday cheese board? Well, I love a good cheese board. And one of the things that I like to have, I like to have either a blue or a gorgonzola, a firm cheese, like a cheddar, a semi-soft cheese, like a Havarti or a Gouda, maybe some uh, brie en croute, or just brie it by itself. And one of the things that I like to pair with cheese is because I like the whole salty sweet combination. I like to have fig preserves. And I brought over a uh, truffled honey uh, that would go fantastic with any cheese dish. It really will. And, and it's just fine. Bring them out. Uh, some people like, you know, the, the uh, goat uh, cheese logs with the food on the outside. Maybe like a, uh, like a jalapeno cheddar. Something that's that, and change them out. Change it up. Make it different. Assorted crackers. And if you want to, sometimes you can even add uh, charcuterie like uh, salami and prosciutto or, or uh, uh, serrano ham, uh, chorizo, things like that, just to keep it going. Yeah. That, that sounds amazing. Uh, I know I always love the complimentary on a cheese board that has different textures, not just meat and cheese, but like some nice sauces, some crusty bread, even some pretzels or some crackers. It really give people that option to mix and match. So I feel like we've set the, a nice base. We have some questions answered. Your menu is prepared. You have some thoughts and some tips on, on getting those things started as well as beverages. Um, I want to take a moment and again thank everybody who shared and who's here on Periscope and on Facebook. Um, if you guys need any of these recipes, uh, don't worry about it here. We're going to put the titles up, we're going to put the ingredients up, but I've already gone ahead and created a blog on www.wineantics.com and Rob, is, who's our producer behind the scenes, he's going to pop up a QR code so that you can just click on the screen and you'll get ready for that. Um, and you can click on that or go to wineantics.com, check out in the blog area and find all these recipes, the uh, instructions and everything. Um, so we left off on just getting cheese board ready. We'll say that. We were getting cheese board ready. So I feel like that's a good way to get into preparing an actual appetizer for today. What do you think, Stan? Let's do it. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, what we're doing today is very simple. It's Briat Savarine cheese. Uh, we're going to take that and spread that on a thinly, uh, you know, or moderately sliced bagel or a uh, baguette slice. And then we're going to drizzle, and Maria mentioned this. And what was this honey again, Maria? Truffled honey. Truffled honey. So I normally would go with regular honey over top of this. But Maria has this beautiful truffled honey. And we are just going to take, we've spread a little cheese on there. Yeah. Just top it, just with a drizzle or two on each baguette. Like I said, we're not covering this. We're not making... Uh, no, it's just an accent. Yeah, we're not Winnie the Pooing it. And by the way... <laughs> A cheese, a cheese board is also a good idea if you're having a dinner party for like four or six people. It's a good way to have hors d'oeuvres and cocktails where you don't have to really stay away in the kitchen and you can enjoy your guests. Absolutely it is. I have to say I'm watching the demo of right. you guys and I'm just getting hungry. Yeah, this is this is as simple as it is. I mean, it but is wait, literally that simple to do that. 
but there's more. <laughs> so that uh, looks crazy, nice. crazy fabulous. Sure. Uh, what do you think, Stubb? What would you pair this with beverage wise? So right now I'm making what I call, you know, any with any cheese thing or any beginning to a party, I would normally go with the bubbly. Uh, but I'm making a cocktail with bubbly right now that I call the city cocktail. And I call it that because it was actually uh, given to me by one of my favorite bartenders at one of my favorite local joints. So thank you very much, Matt. Uh, kind of helped me come up with this cocktail. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take an ounce of uh, Four Roses bourbon. We're going to take three quarters ounces of uh, cranberry simple syrup, which I made yesterday. You basically make a simple syrup, one to one ratio water and sugar. And then you um, add about a cup and a half of cranberries to it and boil it off until those cranberries pop. And we all know that from uh, our holiday uh, making of our cranberry sauce. So we're gonna chill the uh, bourbon and the uh, syrup together just to get a little bit of a chill on it. We're not gonna do that too long. My favorite sound. Bam. And we're gonna pour this into the glass. And then we're gonna top this off with, taking Prosecco up a notch, we're gonna top it off with Prosecco, which I have put right here. And when you're pouring the Prosecco in this drink, because you have the liquor in there, but more importantly, the sugar, you have to pour it very slowly and maybe down the side a little bit, as I'm doing here, or it will bubble up way too much. And see, I didn't hit it that hard. But, uh, there you go. And you can give this a little stir, but since you've shaken it, you probably don't need to with the bubbles in there. So go ahead. Please do. This is the best part of being on the live show. She gets to taste all of it. Don't mind. I know it is yours. <laughs> Try not with the uh, with the cheese there. <laughs> you know if I hit a home run with that one or not. That's okay. Don't touch my arm. I know. And and then I I think we have some fans out in Periscope. They're liking the bubbly. They're liking the look. I particularly love the color of that. So that is perfectly fast and perfectly festive too. Yeah, you get a little festive for the holidays with the color in it. And uh, like I said, the cranberry's a little tart, and um, the bourbon just adds a little bit of a kick. It's a nice little, it's a nice little beverage, but it pairs beautifully with this brioche cheese. It's, it's no, it's just fantastic. All right, so you did a fabulous pairing, and uh, I feel like I should throw something in for for effect now. It's for a beverage pairing. Um, now, if you're like me, getting ready for any holiday party, I am not the perfect planner. Okay, I tend to buy things for a party, like going to visit. Um, the day before or the day of. And I know there's a lot of party procrastinators out there just like me. So um, I'm the one that heads to their local ABC store. I'm the one that heads to their liquor store and uh, or their local grocery store the day before or the day of and grabs all of the items that I need to head over to the party really quickly. Uh, and you could see some of the photos. This is me going to the grocery store and picking for this show, getting the pairings ready not too long ago. I am a total party procrastinator, <laughs> but it's fun. You know, it's great that you have your local shoppers, your local giant. There are a wide range of products out there, anywhere from $6 to $15 that can get you party ready in a heartbeat. And be like me because a lot of us are like me. <laughs> so um, for par pairing for this, I went to the local grocery store and I came up with two uh, actual uh, drinks. Uh, one is uh, a little less traditional. We can say it could be category uh, could be in the category of the champagne for beers um, <laughs> or a beer as a champagne for the common person. We'll go with that or just me. Um, I picked up a six pack of Lining Kugel's Cranberry Ginger Shanty, okay? This is a holiday or festive season type of beer. Lining Kugel is itself is a nationally distributed chain, and then they have these great uh, seasonal beverages that come out. I love the idea of something simple on the plate, uh, such as just cheese, honey, and crispy, uh, baguette matching with a complex seasonal beer like ginger and a shanty and it's light and it'll keep it'll get you started on a party next I went uh, more traditional and you already mentioned bubbly mm -hmm. uh, I paired it also this dish also with a Prosecco and my go-to Prosecco available at, that I found at any grocery store is Rufino it is my go-to uh, DOC Prosecco, which is the, the common Prosecco made out of Italy. 
uh, because it's highly accessible. It's consistently good from year to year and honestly cheap anywhere between, you know, 11 and $15. So those are my pairings, a little, little non-traditional with a beer, but very relevant. And of course, very traditional with just a straight Prosecco. Absolutely. It goes along the lines with what we were talking about earlier though, like having variety uh, for your, for your holiday gatherings, having a little something for everyone, regardless of uh, who's showing up to your party. Yeah. Like those pairings, Jen, that's great. Yeah, of course. And I'm a fan yeah. of the shandies. Which one of us wins on this, on this pairing, Maria? <laughs> <laughs> I have to eat. I realize, yeah, I know, right? I know. So I'm bribing you. I'm, I'm plying you with food. I'm here, gonna so. go with. <laughs> All right. No, we're not keeping. Oh. Score. No, we're not keeping score. So, obviously. Maria, would you suggest any pairings with, you know, e either the cheese board or this specific, uh, brilliant, uh, dish? Well, to be honest with you, uh, I am more of a wine person than a beer person. However, I do like. Uh, Pilsners, lighter, lighter beers. Uh, I'm a Stella Artois nut. Uh, that's always in my fridge. And that would go really well with this as well, because I think it's just got the right amount of bite to yeah. it. I agree with that. Amazing. Well, very nice. I'm All giving right, the so point to Maria for this round. Oh, okay. Well, she is our special guest, because so I think you're going to win every time. Just, just wait till the East German judge gets in on this. Right. And nobody's going to win. <laughs> Plus, uh, you're in close proximity to Stubbs, so I think you're always going to win. <laughs> you, feel, you may fear you a little bit. Nice. Yeah, that's good or not. That's true. Um, so we have the cheese course and pairings down. So let's move on to some heavier hors d'oeuvres. Right. Our next dish is a bit of a holiday party classic, the Swedish meatball. And Maria, take it away. So, this is a, a, one of those dishes, like I said, people can just help themselves. You don't have to serve them. And even you can use it as an hors d'oeuvre or have it for dinner over egg noodles. Now, so I'm going to kind of bring in a couple of regular items that you can get anywhere. This is so easy, it's going to make your head explode. Well, not in a bad way, but. And you can do it in a crock pot. So, get your handy dandy crock pot out. And it's so simple, like you just throw everything in. You have one can of beef broth, real simple. And then you have one can of cream of mushroom soup. Again, you cannot get easier than that. And get yeah, yes, this one. Hey, Joe. You're welcome. Easter Bunny, pop pop. Live. And this is something you can. Even if you want to just make it for dinner one night, you can put it on in the morning and you go to work and you come back and you got dinner done. But it's also good for a party as well. And you just kind of stir that up. And then here's another secret super duper ingredient. I mean, soup mix. Just throw that in there. And I this is something that you can find anywhere. And it's economical. And just kind of just mix that in. And then for a little added zest, a little bit of steak sauce, because who doesn't love a little steak sauce? Just like two tablespoons, call it a day. And then instead of you having to make meatballs, just put the meatballs in, buy, buy a bag, put them in there. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's, nobody's gonna die and, if you don't make your own meatballs. I love this philosophy, Maria, with uh, letting, you know, kind of, semi-homemade sort of thing going on, especially when you're throwing a larger party. Right. Yeah. So you just put that all in there and put it on, on low, five hours, or on high, three hours, and, and you're pretty much good to go. And there's going to be one final step, which I'm going to show you now. Boom. And this is going to give you that, that creamy factor. Oh, the, the magic of TV. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah, it's like we practiced oh for something. Oh my goodness! Wow, it's finished and fabulous. I know. So one of the things to give it that added creaminess, you want to add sour cream at the end. Okay. Now this is important because sometimes when you add um, cream, sour cream, or heavy cream to something that's hot, it'll curdle and it'll get that sep it'll separate and get those white bumps in it. So what you want to do is you want to temper the sour cream. Bring the sour cream to room temperature, and just put a little bit of the hot liquid in there. And, and temper it like you would for chocolate or anything like that, just to get the sour cream temperature ready to mix in. So this is almost like a ready-made double boil sort of, right? Pretty sort much. Of like that. And then you just put it back in. Boom, boom, boom. And oh. cooking with Crisco. 
So, and there you go. And then just give it a, a spoon and serve. And now again, I will tell you this, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm a fan of the semi-homemade. And if you don't want to go through all this trouble and you have an Ikea close to you, <laughs> buy their mix because it's delicious. And if you don't have an Ikea near you and you want their mix, Amazon sells it. And there's no shame. You don't have to tell them where it came from. And that is a traditional Swedish sauce, though. It so, is a traditional yeah, exactly. Swedish sauce. There you go. Done. Pour it over noodles, finish stirring it, and warm it up. And you've got a party. Boom. Yes, absolutely. Um, and Stubb, what is your pairing beverage-wise for this? What I started with? I don't even know. I have two, ironically. You? Okay, well, start, start at the top. Wow, awesome. So my first one, I thought about just as a wine. Uh, obviously, I'm a wine guy. I started the cocktail, so I'm going to start with the wine with this one. For this one here, I'm going with the Velvet Devil of Merlot from Charles Smith out of uh, Cal serve you? California. Oh, oh, I'll serve you if you serve me. Oh, I know. It's like we're behind the barn, right? I might. Um, so, um, yeah, this has a little bit of it, some decent uh, fruit forwardness, uh, but it, it, it tempers a little bit, but also matches the, uh, the little bit of the smokiness and the gravy-like of, uh, of the meatballs here. So that's my first pairing. I'm coming. <laughs> Look at that, crazy. Here's the service around there. It looks pretty good. <laughs> it's amazing, right? <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> oh, we're eating on camera. Oh, I'm super jealous now. This beautiful dish, we might as well eat and taste it with it. Oh. <laughs> my fingers. Mm. All right, well, I'll jump in now because um, I, I, we'll, we'll wait. We'll let everybody wait for your second pairing stuff. I, I, I love that Maria mentioned uh, Ikea and because that's the first thing that everybody thinks of when, when it comes to Swedish meatballs. And, and I love the fact that you've taught us not only how to do it very traditional uh, or from scratch, I should say, but also how to cut some corners. This was me today, I've, or not today, yesterday when I visited Ikea, I found the perfect pairing and it starts off as non-alcoholic, actually. I don't like that. Very proud of myself. <laughs> um, and since I'm not in the kitchen with you guys, I actually sat down and ate some meatballs yesterday to celebrate with you. Um, <laughs> uh, I, but I'm fairly... <laughs> what Maria puts out there is uh, going to be on par, probably better. So uh, don't forget if you need the instructions or any of the recipe, uh, it's up on www.wineantics.com um, and you can just click on the blog section. Um, for me though, the pairing, the first pairing that I picked with that, or I think I only actually did one, um, was from Ikea, non-alcoholic, as I said, it's called Dryic Bubel. And I'm not even making this up because we all know that Ikea comes up with some fascinating names. Um, it's actually apple and a Lingden berry, which is that soda and that, that pink drink that you get from Ikea. And it's just a fun, non-alcoholic sparkling uh, juice for all intents and purposes. Now, the way to kick that up for us people that like to imbibe is either to add, you know, the Prosecco, the Rufino Prospecto, uh, the Rufino Prosecco that I mentioned earlier, or um, you, you can even splash a clear li liquor in there, like a gin, a, a vodka, something along those lines. And it'll really take that non-alcoholic, bubbly, fizzy, a little sweet beverage uh, up to the adult level. So Stubb, I'd love to hear from you what your uh, second pairing is. And you know, I don't like to keep anything too simple. So my second pairing, actually, I uh, Port City uh, Brewery is fairly close to my house. Someone has told me it's only a 1.1 mile walk from here. I, um, I don't know, I've never tested that myself, obviously. But uh, visiting their tasting room is amazing and fun. And I thought that their, uh, their porter, which has won multiple awards since they've uh, come into being, at every competition that's ever been. It's got a little smoke to it. It's got a little bite to it. It's got the maltiness to it. Once again, it complements, but also contrasts with the uh, with the um, the sauce of the meatballs and the meatball itself. Oh, look at this. Here, here's some Port City footage. Look at that. It's amazing. Oh. I always love to see the behind the scenes footage. You know, yeah, it's great. On the and bottle. Once again, this, is, this is a great local place here uh, to go and visit. And they have a lot of great beers, but 
as soon as uh, Maria and I talked about the menu, or Maria told me what the menu should be, and she mentioned this, I knew I was going to do a Port City Porter with this. It's delicious. And it works. I'm really on the losing end of all this today, I would just like to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm not drinking. I'm not eating. <laughs> but I did have Swedish meatballs at Ikea yesterday. Excellent. So um, I see that there's a lot of people out on, on Facebook that I just want to take a moment uh, as we're now getting through about halfway of the recipes. We've got two more fabulous recipes to share and lots more pairings. Lots more. I mean, I speak good English. Um, <laughs> so Jeff Adams is out there, Ryan Perez, uh, Cheryl, who uh, bros, which I, I knew I was going to butcher that name. I also saw our, our friend Mark Suspic. He was at, he was in here earlier. I just want to take a moment and say thank you. I appreciate you being here. Uh, I appreciate you sharing. I appreciate the hearts and the likes. Um, I hope we're helping you get ready for your holiday holiday party season, which I feel starts pretty promptly after Thanksgiving. Um, so our, our so our next dish. Let's let's keep the flow going. Let's do the pairings. Keep you guys eating. Keep you guys drinking. Our next dish is a little something different and has multiple ways that you can pair it as well. So what do we have next, Maria? We have uh, what we call a tortilla española. Now, it's a Spanish tortilla. It's not a Mexican tortilla. It has nothing to do with that. It's eggs and potato. And you can add things like green onions, bell peppers, if you want to. And it's something you can make ahead of time in a tray, cut out little squares and leave out, and you can be room temperature. And it is the quintessential tapa in Spain. You can also cut bigger pieces and use it as a luncheon uh, dish with like a, a green salad with it. Um, I'm going to make that for you right now, and uh, I'll be right back. Nice. Yes, I've seen some prep on this. Uh, I'm very excited about this. Very, very excited. Jen, have you tasted one of these before yourself? I have not. Okay. I've actually, I actually went through and in preparation for Chef Maria coming on, I looked at what it looked like, and I and I firmly said that I had never tasted this before. Though it looks fabulous, it looks very quiche esque. But like you told me, Same you family. Have bread to it. Right. No, there's no bread to it. And the term tortilla came by because uh, uh, in Spanish, a torta is a cake. Well, this is a small, so it's a tortilla. And it's very different than what you would see in South America or uh, Mexico. Completely different. Now, if you go to Spain and you ask for a tortilla, this is what you're going to get. Really? You're not going to get that flat kind of... No, no, there's, no, there's no chips and salsa in Spain. They don't do that. That's terrible. I know. Well, it's a different country. Yeah. Spanish <laughs> is even different. So uh, we're just cracking a lot of eggs in here. I was going to say, that's that's a lot of eggs. <laughs> well, the recipe that you have is for basically if you want to do it in a skillet and then right. stick it in the oven to finish off instead of trying to flip it over, this is just going to be baked from start to finish. Boom. This is a party dish. So you just kind of want to whisk it a little bit. And you're going to want to add, you know, some salt and pepper to taste as, as you do. And then again, here's another one of my study homemade. If you don't want to chop up potatoes, buy them. Look, buy them in the frozen section, the little squared potatoes. No harm, no foul. And are these raw? Are they far baked or free cooked, Maria? No, they're just they're, southern style just, potatoes. They're, they're already ready to go, and you're going to cook them in the oven anyway. Excellent. And I'm going to chop up a little bit of a, of a green onion here and put it in there for you. Just to give it a little bit of flavor. All right. And and then to make it even richer, we're gonna add a little sour cream to it. Nice. So nice. now sour cream is that a uh, less fancy word for creme fraiche or? Yeah. Okay. Less fancy word for creme fraiche. Nice. And what does the sour cream do for the baking process? Is it, it all just, fluffy it just, eggs? Or yeah, it's fluffy. It, it does. It gives us some body. All right. It gives us some body. And what you want to do? Then you want to take this, uh, just a regular aluminum pan, easy cleanup. You want to spray it with nonstick, uh, which I'm not going to do right now, but because I don't have any. And then you just put it in there, just like that. And it doesn't look like much, but it does expand. And you put it in, in, in the oven at 375, uncovered for about 35 minutes or until it gets all golden and puffy. And look at this, through the magic of live of television. television what we have here is la 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 
we have one that's completely done for you. So, and then you can do is you can just take it, flip it over. Oh, and it can, oh, well, again, the magical black television, pretty close, but you get the idea. And well, that didn't kind of work out, but as Julia Child says, nobody knows what happens in the kitchen except you. And we'll just make it work. Except when you're live. Except when you're live. Yeah. But then again, she was live too when she started doing her shows. Well, that's a, that is a fact. That is a fact indeed. And she split a couple of, she spilled a couple of omelets in her day. That is very true. But I think she thought that was part of the fun. Of course it's, it is. It is part of the fun, It's right? part of the fun. Excellent. Especially if you have wine with it. <laughs> Which she always did. Oh, as you do. So how long did we cook this again? Because I, I lost track of time Sorry. because it was so quick. In and out of 35, year. 40 minutes. There we go. 375. So that prep took all of what, about three and a half minutes? Yeah, pretty much. Um, and then you just let it go for the next 40 minutes or so. Yeah. And you have this great dish. And you have this lovely dish. Bam. Mm. Oh, yeah. That is amazing. It broke, but. So, yeah, I mean, it's, like I said, you can have it room temperature, you can have it. You know, as, as, as a side dish for a luncheon plate, perfect for you. All right. Um, I am not hearing Jen right now. All right. No, it's, I'm here. I'm here. I apologize. Oh. <laughs> so uh, that looks fabulous. You did an amazing job taking something that was very rectangular in this case right. and cutting it up and making it look nice and, and making it actually look like an appetizer. Cause I was wondering when I saw the pictures of this, I was like, how do people make that look like an appetizer? It's a quiche. You serve it in little squares. No, you can do all types of things. And that's a little toothpick in it. If you want to make it fancy, chop a little fresh parsley on there. Do you plate it on, on a platter? And, and there you go. <laughs> parsley is the glitter of the food world, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Not the, the curly one, the, the Italian flat leaf one. That one's nice. Yeah, like I said, you can even put like um, roasted bell peppers in here. You can put um, anything. I gotta put scallions in. You can whatever you want. It's the world is your oyster. It's your canvas. I always love scallions and egg. So Stub, yes. What are your pairings, or at least one of them? Let's get people started. Well, actually, I only have one, and okay. we, made a, we made a traditionally Spanish dish, so I went with a Spanish wine, and I went with uh, Albarino, and it's one of my favorites. Uh, I usually will pair this with seafood um, or sometimes chicken, but mm -hmm. I love Albarino. It's got great acid. I know I talk about that a lot on all of our shows. I love the acid, especially when you're pairing food. Yeah. I think it's going to go very well, especially with the, oh. the creaminess of the eggs, the creaminess of the sour cream in there. So I went with uh, with this great Albarino here, uh, Val Le Sosego. It's, it's perfect. It's perfect. I love Albarino. I, like you said, I love the acid on, on the Albarino. I love um, the, the just the characteristics. I love to have a light white wine with an egg dish. I think the egg is dense and hearty, especially in this scenario so this albarino is a very uh very nice compliment to it uh mm -hmm. i i see a couple people you're getting lots of yums um oh, abby uh froming is totally saying yum so did cheryl on facebook live so you're getting lots of great feedback and you're watching abby and cheryl yeah, both. yeah. <laughs> um and i see the couple people in this later i'm just saying <laughs> and a couple people in Periscope as well. Lots of kisses, lots of hearts, which I just assume is people loving up on You're also welcome. I just don't personally know that you live close enough to Jen over in a bit. <laughs> yes, because you have a, yeah, you'll have a house full of food very shortly. So Jen, what did you uh, what did you think about this when we presented the recipes to you? What are you uh, what are you looking to pair with this? Yeah, and you know, I what I love about this dish is it's it's appropriate both for uh, the cocktail party, and it's appropriate for a brunch uh, or, or something along that line. So I went with something that is versatile both ways, can, can go either way, and you could enjoy it. Um, I, I, uh, so I didn't go wine. I went a cocktail. And you and is usually the one who picks the cocktails. I picked the French 75. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a combination. Uh, and I recommend Bombay Sapphire or Tangeray. 
Those are both great things. Um, it's also lemon juice and some skin and some skin of the lemon for garnish. A little simple syrup. And the last ingredient is just bubbles. I mean, I, I have already mentioned the Prosecco, the Rufino Prosecco, uh, three different times. But there's other, if you're mixing a, a cocktail out of bubbly, it's going to go a little bit lower. The Rufino sits at a, 11 to $14. If you want to pick up something like a cupcake, which is very accessible, uh, nationally accessible in grocery stores, that's okay too. And that sits right under the $10 price point. So all you need is a champagne flute, um, a little bit of lemon juice, uh, a little bit of syrup, uh, and some bubbles, which I feel are always going to be around at a cocktail party or at brunch. Boom. That's the uh, French 75. And I love the fancy somewhere. And there's the Tangeray and Bombay I recommend. Love those, those uh, gins uh, some, with some lemons. Lemons are always good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's my recommendation. Hey, Maria, any thoughts on the pairings? I mean, I know you, you've done the food. Uh, do you have anything that you really like to match with this dish? Honestly, I am a fan of a really nice Rioja. Oh. Uh, I think the dish is, it seems light, but I think it can stand up to a Rioja. It, you... any, any really good Spanish wine would really bring it out. Especially if, you, if, you're, if you're doing this at the tapas uh, party and you have chorizo and you have olives and you have marinated artichokes mm -hmm. and things like that. I think that would really be nice. Yeah, I, I think the cream is the eggs. I think you're right with the, with the heavier body reds. But I also uh, think, you know, adding some of the other ingredients you talked about, that's where you maybe, in my opinion, you really want to step up right. to the reds and get away from the whites. Uh, although I love that French 75 idea. Oh, that, was, yeah. that was really good. One of those later. That's how the kids say it's all fleek. <laughs> <laughs> I was not prepared for that. <laughs> Keeping it live, Maria. Thank you. Uh, so that was actually a perfect recommendation. And if I had found a Rioja, I would have actually paired that. But I thought that, you know, during cocktail parties, you're going to eat some of these dishes the day of, but then there's going to be leftovers. So I'm just finding reasons to drink earlier in the day. Maybe that's what As you do. I think that's why we're good friends, Jen. <laughs> exactly. And it is brunch time on the West Coast. So everybody on the West Coast is now has a drink option ready for them. And it's never too early. It's not too early to pour a cocktail. So <laughs> no. there you go. All right. So I think we have one more dish coming up, don't we? We do. And this is, again, one of those people that the people like and they can help themselves and you make it the day of before and you serve it cold the next day. And I'm talking about a nice poached salmon with a dill sauce. Real simple to do. I'm just going to demonstrate the poaching liquid right now. Basically, you take three cups of water and you take three cups of Chardonnay. Chardonnay. -nay. You know what she said? I see you're Chardonnay -nay. using the Julia Child method, method of measuring. Three cups. Uh, I see, just keep I going. see I, you know, there's no reason to, I love it. to be that way. And then I want to add a couple of fennel fronds. Mm -hmm. And we're going to add. Yeah, oh. Fennel oh, fronds. They, had, they were a one hit disco wonder. They uh, were. Weren't they? Yeah, they had yeah. that song licorice. Right. Um, and then had some basil. And we want to add a little bit of juniper berries. And we're gonna add a sliced lemon. And what we're gonna do with this, we are going to bring it to a boil and then simmer it for about 15 minutes and let the flavors blend a little bit. And then what, And then we're gonna set it aside and let it cool. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pour this over a salmon. And I'm gonna show you about the size salmon you wanna do here. Oh, we're both leaving camera at the same time. No, oh, no, oh, no, it's the end of the world. <laughs> We're back. Okay. And <laughs> this is what you will have. Oh my goodness. You I love TV. Cream sauce in there. It is in there. Yes. And I start with adult cream sauce. Adult cream sauce is really simple. The recipe you have, uh, it's a little bit of sour cream, a little bit of uh, mayonnaise with Dijon, uh, dill. If you don't, if you can't find fresh dill, usually in your uh, refrigerator section, they sell like these concentrated herbs. Um, and you can just squeeze out what you need and it gives you the flavor and and you can just put that out and people will go nuts for it So Maria, why don't we uh, once you uh, once you do the, the sauce for it? Why don't we cool that before we pour it over the, 
the because fish you don't want, you don't want to cook the fish until you're ready to poach it. Right. And like I said, the fish cooks at uh, 350 for about 20 minutes, covered in foil. Mm -hmm. And then just get it out. You drain it. And sometimes when you cook salmon, like some white bits come up on top. Just take a, a pastry brush and use a basting liquid and just brush it off. And then you want to cover it with olive oil. If you, after, if you take it out of school, cover it with olive oil, just brush it with olive oil, put it in a pan, cover it overnight. And then just bring it out. Here you go. Decorate it with some fresh dill, lemon, and serve a, a, the, the sauce on the side. So is the olive oil for flavor? Is the olive oil just for some kind of fresh Just to keep, keep it moist. moist. Yeah. And do you need to let the fish cool before you actually put it in the refrigerator? Yeah, you, yeah. Because if not, then like it'll make you inside your refrigerator sweat. Right. You don't need that. No. No one likes a sweaty refrigerator. No. The worse than a sweaty oh. gym sock. It's oh, awful. It's horrible. It's terrible. And then everything gets wet. Oh, no. I don't like it. Absolutely. Uh, I'm just the voice of laughter here. Don't mind me. <laughs> I have no mind. That's long ago. So I'm going to move on to the, the pairing with this. Um, I'm not a huge fan of salmon generally or uh, in, in general, but I love this dish. Love this dish. Um, so. And it's easy. Like I said, make it the night before. Mm -hmm. Even if you're having a brunch the next day or a breakfast, a holiday, New Year's Day breakfast, New Year's Day brunch, do this the night before, the day before, stick it in the fridge, pull it out with a couple of toast points, um, you know, some cheese. You can have a really nice, elegant New Year's Day brunch. That's amazing. So my wine pairing for this is very traditional, actually. Uh, I went with a, uh, a Chablis. Um, not Chablis, Chablis. Uh, great uh, region of Burgundy. I love the wines there. Some great values in that area if you look hard enough. Uh, as far as what you have, but I think it's a great traditional tearing uh, with the dish. Um, it's too cold, I'm but so you've got some nice acid on there, but you get the lemon uh, that complements the lemon there, and everything is amazing. I'm just going to go there. All right. So, because I have no shame. <laughs> uh, Jen, what, uh, oh, my God, yeah. what did you think for this dish? Well, um, it's time to get festive right now because this is our, our last recipe, and I feel like I need some can kind of see I got some reindeer antlers on because <laughs> it is the holidays and this is what we do. Uh, so I actually have three pairings. Because three pairings? I do. I know. I went, I went totally crazy That's because when you shop the day before for a party, you overcompensate your procrastination. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so two of the, two whites because it is a fish dish and then a red. The meal is complex and hearty. I mean, look at this. You've got a, a nice sauce to it. The, you've got a nice fish to it, a couple different techniques in it. Um, and then, uh, so I was like, okay, we can really bring this out. The first recommendation I have, or the first pairing I have, is for those that are sweet fan lovers. We haven't really talked about that. Um, there are a lot of great options for you guys out there, even if you don't want to go like Moscato, like bubbly Moscato, very, very sweet. There's a nice run the middle meat between medium dry and medium sweet it's called chateau saint shape saint michelle's it's columbia valley's riesling and i remember when i checked it out found it in the grocery store yesterday it was around 12 dollars. so it's a it's a nice thing it's uh nationally accessible um and it's it's there for you guys that like to wines and when you're going to a party I want you to think about what you're going to drink too. I always like to bring something for myself that I know that I'm going to enjoy for the evening even if I don't know the dish. This is a good wine that you can drink by yourself keep it low alcohol throughout the night because parties are long and you know what you're going to like. So that's that's my first recommendation. The second one I have is more more what I would say traditional, more along the lines of what I love uh, about a white wine and a uh, a fish dish. It's the Scarsboro Starsboro Sauvignon Blanc. Um, it's a very very good price point between ten and thirteen dollars. Um, it is dry. It is crisp. It is high acid. It's going to really bring flavors of the food dish. Um, I, I think high acid, grassy notes, all these things that are complex in a wine, they just perfectly complement a complex fish dish as well. The last one that I picked is probably the least traditional when we're talking about 
a, a, a fish and wine pairing. It's a red wine and I suggest a Merlot. I know you're going to totally go crazy, but I got excited when I went to the grocery store yesterday uh -huh. and I found the 2013 Rodney Strong Sonoma County Merlot. Now these, the, the, I've met uh, the business managers and uh, the promoters and a couple of the staff at Rodney Strong when I went out to Lodi, great people. And maybe that drives my uh, motivation for picking up this wine. But like I said, the salmon dish is really complex. It's got multiple layers to it. It can hold up to a peppery, um, a rich red. And if you like Merlot, I highly recommend this. And I'm so excited to see that it's nationally distributed. Even down in the little middle of nowhere, Virginia, I feel like I live in. <laughs> you threw me for a loop with the Merlot there, Jen. I really like I know. It. I've got to every once in a while. No, the Rodney Strong is, is I like, it's a good brand. It's strong. It's, brand. it's strong. It's a strong it's, choice. It's fuente. We fuente. See, we macho. <laughs> So, yes, I, every once in a while, Stub, I can throw you for a loop. And I know. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm being thrown for a loop every now and again. So I know that you have one other one other pairing, don't you? I do. And when you said I'm going maybe the most non-traditional with the, with the salmon dish, I'm like, oh, wait until you see what the hell I have coming up here. Uh, because it is the holidays. I've chosen uh, a snowflake martini, which we start with uh, three parts of white cranberry juice so there's one there's two there's three we go two parts of blue carousel or caraco if if you're so inclined i guess right i've heard that Some people I, like it. Yeah, I grew up in the south i'm not a big fan of it either but i've heard it before um and then one part uh vodka and maybe it's a little more vodka, yeah, maybe. but whatever um so you just pour that over ice in a shaker and Shake it up. Yeah. Shake, 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 Sonora. And then just turn it into a beautiful martini glass. Bam. And look at that lovely oh. color. Right and it there. reminds the salmon of whence it came. Indeed. <laughs> now, why did I pick this? Uh, I know that the uh, dill cream sauce does have the cream on it. Uh, so I know it's going to stand up to a little bit of the sting of the vodka. But that creaminess also is going to temper this drink. Most people take this drink, it's really sweet. Uh, but with the white cranberry in there, it makes it a little tart. Uh, the uh, carousel makes it a little, um, you know, that little sweetness in, adds the sweetness, but it's not too sweet. And I think it pairs well, hopefully. That's fine. Uh, with the salmon preparation with the lemon, and especially with the, uh, if you eat it with the sauce. And we're going to let Chef Maria tell us if that works or not. And I think with the range of beverage pairings we've offered here, it really suits almost every palate. We've given yes. you a cocktail um, that is fabulous, not only in, in theory or in, in ingredients and in instructions, but in color. I mean, that's perfect for a holiday pairing. Um, and then sweet whites, uh, dry whites, and a big bold red. I mean, that's that's the entire gamut to pair with this just one dish, which I feel like salmon would probably take the headliner of any cocktail party dish. And you know what? A big, bold red wasn't just my name in prison either. Oh. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, confessions. It's oh. it's holiday party pairing confessions. Go, Maria. <laughs> of course, yeah, I'm going to have <laughs> taste all of these beverages now. Now, now, who's, now who's having fun? Yeah, the truth comes out as the snowflake cocktail comes out. <laughs> Indeed. So um, this is this is the end of the show. We're getting really close to the end of the show, and I'm and I'm kind of sad because there's so many great pairings. There's so you know with food and with beverages, we've had a lot of fun with uh, Chef Maria coming on board and and enjoying many <laughs> libations with stuff today, which is so no, much. I appreciate it. <laughs> so so much fun. Um, I, I see Jeff Adams is ready to have your salmon dish in his house right now. Like there's been so many great compliments uh, on your salmon dish, the way it looks and the techniques that you're showing people. Uh, I want to take a minute. Yeah, call 888 for only 1995. You can get not one, but two salmons directly to your house. Only 1999. However, unrefrigerated. Yeah. So right. it could be right. like this. Right. <laughs> De uh, eat at your own risk. Um, I, I want to. <laughs> so, so stop. Is there anything that you would like to close out the show with? I want to thank everyone for joining us on Facebook Live and Periscope. Uh, 
hopefully we've had a little bit of fun and more importantly, hopefully giving you some uh, perhaps great ideas for your holiday parties. I really, really want to thank my, my good friend, Maria. I really appreciate you coming over and well, being here with me today um, and doing this. Like, I couldn't imagine doing this with anyone else. This is really fun. I had a thank blast. you so much. No, I had a blast. And thank you guys for having me. I really, really enjoyed this. And, you know, I'm so glad we had this time together. Oh. Just have a laugh or sing a song. So anyway, thank you so much for allowing me to come into your Facebook world and invade your Sunday. So looking forward to finishing these cocktails and singing, and singing some duets later. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Yeah. Wow, it is really the Andrew Sisters part. What? Dinner and a show, right? Yeah, we try. You ask for right now. Dinner theater. Everybody needs to go out and make one of fabulous cocktails. Grab up, grab some of these bottles of wine. Like I said, you could probably find them at your local grocery store, or you could find them at Total Wine or one of the bigger uh, chains. So go out, check it out. Uh, the recommendations, the instructions, the recipes, they're all on my blog, which is www.wineantics.com. Uh, Rob is going to pop up the QR code again, where you can just take a picture of it and you can go directly there. Or you can go to wineantics.com and then just click on the little blog section. It's the first blog that should pop up. Uh, Chef Maria, again, thank you so much. You were delightful. You were entertaining. You. you had all the personality I could ever want want for, ever desire in a chef guest. So thank, thank you. you. <laughs> um, I, I love to share these things with you guys. And I love that Stubb uh, has great friends and we bring great content to you, but you never know where this live stream show or this live show is gonna go. So I just wanna encourage everybody, go to the, go to the Wine Antics page, www.wineantics.com and please sign up for the stay, let's, let's stay connected uh, page. Uh, it's a little pop-up that'll come up. Uh, it's, only your info, it's only your first name and your email address, but it'll allow me to start getting you information when we do featured shows like this as Beyond the Bottle, but of course our uh, weekly show, which is Wine Antics Live. Uh, happens every Thursday, Thursday at 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. And other than that, happy holidays to everybody. We are so happy to share this with you. And I really appreciate the people out on Facebook and on Periscope who have watched. Cheers.